Hello guys, today I'm just making a video on some basic insights on how to solve questions related to the changes in energy. I know many of you guys have this topic coming up for exams, so hopefully this video can help you all in order to solve these type of questions. By the way, time codes will be in the description box below so that you guys can skip to any questions you guys like. And uh, if you guys want to see the questions more better, you guys can change the video settings in the YouTube settings there of the video. And uh, yeah, if you guys have enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. And uh, let's begin with the video. I know many of you guys also have school coming up for the 2022 exams. So good luck to you all as well. And yeah, let's begin with the video. All right. So the first question one is that the figure below shows the horizontal forces which is acting on the car. You guys can see that there's a forward 800 newtons that is causing the car to move forward and there's a backwards resistance on the car it's about 800 newtons as well now you have to say that which one of the statements describes the motion of the car since you we have to understand the topic of resultant forces here so resultant forces is like let's say the single force that is acting on the car so while while calculating the resultant force in this case which is going to be about 800 newtons minus 800 newtons so since you have 800 newtons minus 800 newtons you're going to get a value of about let's say uh, it's going to be about zero newtons right so you have to remember newton's first law of motion newton's first law of motion states that if the resultant force that is acting on an object if it's going to be zero then the object is going to continue moving at the same speed and in the same direction so here you guys can see that if zero newtons is the overall force that is acting on the car that means it'll have a constant speed according to Newton's first law. So that's the reason why we're going to tick the box. It will have a constant speed. All right, let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question is that during part of the journey, the car is driven at a constant speed for about five minutes. Which one of the equations links distance traveled, speed, and time? So in this case, you guys have to remember the distance speed time formula. So we know that distance traveled is equivalent to speed times time. That's going to be your answer for about one mark. Let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question is that during a different part of the journey, the car accelerates from about 9 meters per second to 80 meters per second in about 6 seconds. So we have to use this formula, which is given to us as acceleration is equivalent to change in velocity divided by time taken. So the acceleration is going to be equivalent to change in velocity, since they've given us the final velocity to be about 80 meters per second. We're going to subtract it with 9 meters per second, that's going to be your answer, divided by the time taken, which in this case is also given to us in about 6 seconds. So we're going to use that value 6 seconds. Now what I want you guys to do is that I need you guys to put this in your calculator and find out the value. So it's going to be a value of about 1.5 meters per second squared. Now that's going to be your answer for about, let's say, 2 marks. So you're going to mention that sure you're working, it's really critical that you guys show the working in these type of questions. All right, let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question is that which equation links both acceleration, mass, and resultant force? So we have to know the formula of FMA, which is the resultant force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, this is a formula that you guys should know when dealing with acceleration, mass, and resultant force. That's going to be about one mark. Let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question is where I've solved it already, just to save up time, is that you guys can see that the mass of the car is about 1,120 kilograms, and the mass of the driver is about 80 kilograms. Since we know that the resultant force, we have to calculate the resultant force that is acting on the car while the driver is accelerating. So now, in this case, we have, we're using the same formula that we have used above, where you guys can see that resultant force is equivalent to mass times acceleration. So you're going to use that same formula here, FMA. That's it. Remember this, by the way, this is a formula triangle. It, it really summarizes the formula in a really nice way. So here you have force is equivalent to mass. Now in mass, in this case, I found out from 1,120 kilograms. This is from the question itself. And I'm multiplying this by the acceleration. But uh, the acceleration, like I said, it's not from this question. It's from the question, the answer of this question above. So you have to carefully analyze this type of questions when dealing with the result of force calculations. So we're going to get about 1,800 newtons. Now, why did we multiply 1,200 question, uh, 200, let's say, 
kilograms. I'm not getting it from here. I'm combining this value with the mass of the driver. That's why we multiply 1.5 meters per second squared times 1,200 to give you a value of about 1,800 units. That's because the total mass is going to be combining of the mass of the car and as well as the mass of the driver. which is going to give you a value of about 1,200 kilograms. And you multiply that by the acceleration to give you your final answer. All right, let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question is to calculate the distance traveled while the car is accelerating. Now, for this type of question, you have to understand is that you have to remember a nice little formula where I think is where your v square subtract with u, u square is equivalent to 2 times a times s. Now, s, this is a formula which represents, I think it's a formula that you guys must take down in your, uh, in your list, is that this formula is really critical when uh, dealing with the uh, distance calculations along with the values given to you, such as acceleration, final velocity, and initial velocity. We know that the final velocity is, let's say, from the question above, we know that's going to be 18 meters. So 18 meters, 9 meters, you're going to use that value. You're going to have 18 square minus 9 square is equivalent to 2 times acceleration, which in this case we, have, we know is 1.5 times s, which is your distance. Now, this is all about rearranging the formula, so you guys should know how to rearrange your formulas. So we're going to get a value, let's say, of equivalent to 4, 3, 2 times 1.5. It's going to give us a value of about 3s. So I, I'm just rearranging this formula just to make this side as the right hand side and this part of the equation as on the left hand side so you have s and we're just going to write it down here you have s is going to be 2 4 3 divided by 3 where s represents your distance again so you have 2 4 3 divided by 3 which is going to give us a value of about let's say 81 meters now that's going to be your answer for about let's say three marks so one mark, I think, is for about the formula itself, just mentioning how you're going to rearrange your equation. So do show your working and the formula as well in order to score those good three marks. All right, let's move on to the next question. Next question is about for four marks. You have to mention that the um, you, can, you guys can see that there's a car driver which sees a fallen tree lying across the road ahead and makes an emergency stop. The braking distance of the car depends on the speed of the car. For the same braking force, explain what happens to the braking distance. If the speed du doubles, you should refer to kinetic energy in your answer. Now, for to get, let's say, for to get uh, about three or four marks, you have to have a detailed and coherent explanation, which should be provided in your answer. So you should basically link logical links together, which is clearly identified, and yeah, in a nice little more factor. So what I'm going to say is that. You're going to say by doubling the speed, let's say by doubling the speed, you're going to have, which it's going to increase, let's say, your kinetic energy. So it's going to increase your kinetic energy. So doubling the speed increases kinetic energy, which increases to by a factor, let's say Ke, kinetic energy is going to increase also, increase by factor of 4. You're going to mention that as well. And you're going to say that the work done by the brakes let's say the work done by brakes is also going to increase as well as a result of this All right, so it's also increasing by a factor of 4 as well by a factor of 4 it's going to be your answer and uh, yeah if the work done increases by 4 then the let's say then the braking distance also increases by 4 so you're going to mention that the braking distance increases by four. That's going to be the answer for about four marks in order to score this good 14 marks. All right, let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question is that you guys can see that there is a student which uses an electric motor to lift the load. In the motor, the electrical energy is transferred into other types of energy. Some of the energy is useful and the rest of the energy is wasted. Name the in useful energy output from the electric motor. Now, the useful uh, energy in this case let's say is the kinetic energy that's because it's moving it's using force in order to lift the load so you're going to mention that it's going to be kinetic energy that's going to be your answer you guys can also mention a uh, gravitational potential energy that's also fine gpe so that's all okay right so now what eventually happens to the wasted energy now this is a key point 
that usually comes in all the exams is that you have to remember they usually would ask you what will happen to the wasted energy. So what do you need to do is you need to write down that the wasted energy, this is a key word that you guys have to remember, it dissipates into the surroundings. Now that's going to be your answer for about one mark. It dissipates into the surroundings. Now wasted energy could be in the form of heat, light, sound, they all dissipate into the surroundings. You guys can also mention that in this case, it could warm the surroundings, or you can also mention that it is lost to the surroundings or it's lost as heat. Those those wordings are all okay in this case. All right, now the graph shows the input energy. The more it needs to lift the different loads by one meter. So you guys can see there's a nice little upward graph. The graph is seen where you, can, you guys can see that the input energy is in the y-axis and the load is in the x-axis. Now you guys have to conclude from the graph about the relationship between the load lifted and the input energy needed. Now we have to use keywords here is because this is only for about let's say two marks so you have to mention is that energy required you're going to write down is that energy increases with load. That's going to be answer for about one mark and you can also mention that it is slowly increasing. Let's say it's slowly at first, slowly, slowly at about, there's like, it, it moves slowly. Let's say the load moves slowly up. Load, load moves slowly up to, let's say, about up to four newtons and then increases rapidly. Then increases rapidly. Now, what I mean by this is that, is that the input energy, it takes a little more time to be lifted as the load in newtons increases, all right? So the more energy is required for as the load is increasing. All right, let's move on to the next question. Now, the next question is that a shop uses escalators to lift customers to about different floor levels. The escalators use electric motors. When the shop is not busy, some escalators are turned off. A uh, sign tells the customers that the escalators are turned off to save energy. So in this case, you have to understand is that each escalator has one motor with an average power of about 4,000 watts. The motor is turned on for an average of about 8 hours each day, 6 days each week. Electricity costs about 15 pence per kilowatt hour. And you have to mention that you have to calculate the cost of the electricity used in an average week to run about one escalator. Now, I have to show clearly how you work out this answer. So since this is for about three marks, you're going to use a nice little formula called EPT is where you're going to calculate your nice little formula where energy transfer is going to be equivalent to your power multiplied by time. Now here, since we have to calculate the cost, we have to calculate the energy. We know the power is about 4,000 watts, so it's going to be 4,000 watts, or let's say 4,000 watts times that amount, uh, depending on your type of questions. So this is 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So we know that one kilowatt is about 1000 watts. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this into kilowatts. Uh, that would be a better option for us to do. So we're going to convert 4000 watts to about kilowatts since they said it's 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So you have 4000 watts. Once you multiply that, you divide 4000 watts divided by 1,000 watts to give you a value of about, let's say, 4, 4 kilowatts. Now you're going to write 4 kilowatts times the time, which in this case is, let's say, 8 hours each day. So in this case, it's going to be 6 days a week. So you're going to have 8 times 6. So since the timing is going to be 8 times 6, it's going to be about 48 hours in total, right? Each day, since it's 6 days a week, that's going to be 48 hours. You're going to multiply that by time. Now this in case is going to give you the energy, or let's say the energy in this case. So you have 4 times 48, that's going to be answered for about 192 joules. Now electricity costs that much, how much will it cost to run, like, it, to run fully? So you have 192 times 2 times, that's going to be answered for about, let's say you're going to multiply this by 2, since you know, actually you're going to, yeah, you're going to, you're going to leave it as it is and not multiplied by anything. Since there is only one motor, the question clearly states that each escalator has only about one motor. So you're going to have 192 joules times 15 pence. 
which is going to give you a cost of about 2,880 pence. And that's going to be the answer for about, let's say, three marks. All right. Since I mentioned that there's only one escalator, which has one motor, we're not going to multiply by two. We're just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to multiply 192 times 15 pence to get the amount of cost in pence to be about 2,880 pence. That's going to be the answer for about three marks. Let's move on to the next question. Now, give one environmental advantage to turning off electric appliances when they are not being used. Now, the most advantage that they would do is they would conserve fossil fuels. That's going to be your answer for about one mark. You guys can also mention that the that there would be less fossil fuels which would be burned, there would be less polluting gases produced, or there would be less greenhouse gases produced. That's all okay for one mark, but I'm just going to go with it conserves fossil fuels. That's going to be your answer for about, let's say, one mark. So guys, this seems to be the end of all the questions. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps a lot. New content will be posted soon. Do comment below on what your thoughts are about this video. If you guys want me to continue solving questions related to past papers or questions related to topic questions. Yeah, I think that's it. And uh, yeah. All right. Bye, guys.